Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Quite a few things here to talk about. Now, I'm just going to jump to it. This came from picking my boys up from school. So let me uh, go over some things. Now, I just I just went live and I realized there were some things that I didn't, uh, <laughs> some things that I didn't uh, touch on. So I'm pulling this up right now. Where is it? Uh... Is it this one? Uh, no, hold on a second. I'm pulling it up to share it with you. I think it's this. Okay. No, oh, shit. I'm tripping. Probably should have got it pulled up before I got on here. Here it is right here. Damn, it just popped up. Finally. Sitting here going crazy. All right, so Devin Haney, ESPN dropped him out. They got rid of him. Well, that's Devin Haney the last time we saw him. And those, uh, I think, dancing on the... Dancing, uh, dancing off the wall, or the off the wall song, whatever. Michael Jackson has a video where uh, De- he's wearing some boots that look very similar to that. Uh, but Devin Haney wasn't able to moonwalk his way to a victory. He ended up getting the Bing Bings put on him. But they dropped him um, from the number six position uh, off of the chart. And I think it has a lot to do with, like they say here, the way Garcia was able to break through his defense. Anyway, Crawford was number one. He's still number one. Anyway, still number two. Yusick is uh, still number three. Alvarez is number four. Bival, he's number five. I don't know why he's number five, but anyway. Uh, Bernabia bubbled up one from seven to six. Javante bubbled up one from eight to seven. Shakir from nine to eight. Tyson Fury from 10 to nine. And Bam Bam Rodriguez was able to get into the mix now at the 10 spot because Devin Haney got the boot. Now, some won't agree with it. I mean, it is what it is. Some are still going to feel like, hey, word on the street. We know what those tests came back. The A, the, A, the A samples, the B samples, you know, I had somebody say, hey, on the underground, I got a source that's saying the B samples came back positive. But they're saying the levels of the Austerine and Nandro, I'm probably saying this wrong because I don't have it in front of me, Nandro, testosterone or whatever. Anyway, they're saying it was like a grain of salt. In an Olympic sized swimming pool. So, Ryan Garcia should be okay. Now, to that I say, hey, you'll hold your horses, let's not take it so stupid. I'm on the fence about this whole thing with Ryan Garcia samples, whether it's corruption involved, secret society, you know, making sure he failed the test. I don't know. All I do know is no one should be cheating. That shit's not cool. People can get hurt, get killed. And if somebody who already, someone like Ryan Garcia who already hits hard with that left hand, to think that he may have been on something. That's horrible. But let's let's wait and see how the dust settles, all right? Boom. Shoo shoo Carrington. Now this is the thing. Oh boy. Some people agree with me. But some people are like, let me show you, right? They're like, screw you, hood champion. How dare you suggest Bruce Carrington can beat Naoya Inoue? Naoya Naoya Inoue is the monster. You don't know boxing, you're just biased to shoo shoo because he's from New York and he's a black guy. Yo, let me tell you something. If I was liking Shushu based off of his race, only half of me would like him. And if it comes to Naoya anyway, and him being Asian, then the other half of me would like anyway. Okay? So I'd be 50% of one, half of the other. The Asian guy and the black guy. I would like both. So get out of here, subscriber. <laughs> All right, let's show you who Bruce Carrington is. Some people still... Don't know who. I already pulled this up. What the hell going on here? Some people still don't know who the hell Bruce Carrington is. So now you know. Boom! There he is. From Brownsville, Brooklyn. He's a guy that got up on the, uh, at the end of his fight and was trying to sound like Mike Tyson. Uh, it was pretty funny, but at the end of the day, Shoo Shoo gets busy. 11 wins, 7 KOs, 63% KO ratio, standing at 5'8, 72 inch reach. I think this is the guy to give Naoya NUA the business. Shoo Shoo is fighting. Where I got my stuff here. I think Shushu's fighting at 126. So I'm going to show you, man, because someone like, oh, Shushu's in another weight division. Hood champion, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just out here to giving hypotheticals on, you know, shit that won't never happen. Hey, you're a subscriber. Hey, you're screw you. That's what we're supposed to do. Have a conversation, champ. Come out here telling us not to have conversations. How do you think th- things get done? Things happen. Start stuff with a conversation. Sometimes you're talking about stuff that you're like, oh, that would never happen. That's never been done before. There's no way in the world. And then what happens after the 
healthy dialogue, brainstorming, disagreeing, having confrontation that starts off destructive, confrontation ends up becoming healthy, right? So y'all need to hold your horses and not take it to the stupid. Now, boom, let's take a look right here, right? Kick some knowledge to you. All right, so this is what we got here, right? This is the, uh, let me show y'all what I'm looking at here. This is the 126 pound division, all right? Now you can see right here, Bruce Carrington's not quite in the racking stack as far as the ring rankings, but he's on his way. Now, when you start taking a look at the WBO, Bruce Carrington's ranked number five. When it comes to the, the IBF, they don't have him ranked, but it's all good. When it comes to the WBC, Bruce Carrington's ranked number eight. And when it comes to the WBA, he's not ranked there. All right? So I don't quite agree with them not having him ranked. But what I will say is Bruce Carrington still has some work to do, but he passes the eye test. Bruce Carrington passes the eye test. Doesn't matter what anybody says. It's uh, Bruce Carrington. Where is my thing here? All right, let me go back here. When it comes to Bruce Carrington, he passes the eye test, and Bruce Carrington gets the job done. You know what I'm saying? And I do think when you come to Styles, I think Bruce Carrington will be able to, to outbox anyway, keep him, keep him honest at the end of his jab. I think Bruce Carrington has the, 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 the footwork to just take that half a step back to get underneath anyway shots to roll out. And counter, but I really think Bruce Carrington, being a slick boxer who has good good defense, ha seems to have a pretty good chin. I think he'd be the guy to outbox, frustrate anyway, and possibly knock him out. But don't get me wrong. I know some of you right now. I, I haven't even finished the video. And you already typed up a comment. Screw you! Don't take it into the stupid. You old retired. You you, you mashed potato. He'll take it easy, right? Bruce Carrington gets busy. And he does need a few more fights, got to be real. But I, I think Bruce Carrington, as far as me, he passes the eye test. And I, I think Bruce Carrington, you know, could, could be the guy, to, especially when you take a look at anyway and what anyway has done in just a couple of fights at 122 pounds. We're talking about four pounds, people. When anyway comes in the ring, he weighs more than 126, all right? So don't act like, oh, that will never happen. It's a dream fight. That's just not a dream fight. Anyway probably walks around about one. 50, 145. You could easily make 126, all right? Now, when you look at anyway, the thing is 27 wins and all them damn knockouts. What's left for anyway to do? He just clipped Neri. You know what I'm saying? Um, he already clipped Fulton. He clipped Topolis. Who, who are we going to put him in with, with him now, you know? Mirajan Akhmadeliev. Who the hell is that? Sam Goodman? Put him in with TJ Doheny? I mean, what, what are we doing here? What, what are we doing? Let's be real. Fulton, Topalis, Akhmadaliev, Goodman, Neri. He, I'll say that, so in the top five, he clipped three of them already. Then you got down here, Aleem, Davis, Pierce. Pierce has called him out. Pierce can fight. Dohany and Cardenas. So the, the, the thing is, does a guy like Neri just want to keep, you know, having a bunch of lateral accomplishments? Or is he like, all right, four different weight divisions, undisputed in two, I'm good. Or is he going to bubble up to 126? The thing is, if he bubbles up to 126, he may not even think about a guy like Bruce Carrington. Now he's talking about fighting Rafael Espinosa, Luis Alberto Lopez, Ray Vargas, who's an extremely difficult fight for him. But the guy, Nick Ball, gave Ray Vargas all he can handle. And then Raymond Ford. So the bottom line is that with a guy like, anyway, him bubbling up to 126, we may really see him get pushed and tested. Now, Tyson Fury and Yusick. Hey, you hold your horses. I'm not just going to come out and slam Tyson Fury like I normally do. Tyson Fury and Usyk is a good fight, man. Uh, I'm excited to see that fight, see how it materializes, how it plays out. If Tyson Fury, what, is he going to try to come and overwhelm him with his size, reach, fight dirty, elbows, forearms, palm, jabbing him with the palm of his hand instead of his fist? Is he going to sit there and hit him with elbows when he's in close? What's the dirty shit Tyson Fury is doing? He's going to lay on him, put his forearm into his neck. Is Usyk going to allow that? Or is Yusek going to sit there and box, be the rabbit he is, get in, get out, uh, you know, close the distance, not throw any punches, and get back out just to make tell Tyson Fury, if I wanted to touch you, I could have. I chose not to. You know, how, how, how is that fight going to play out? I personally think if it goes to decision, there's no way where Yusek can win. I think Yusek has to knock him out. I just don't think it happens. Uh, I do think if Tyson Fury wants to make it easy, he has to come up with a way to get to his body because we know for some 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 reason Alexander Yusik his nuts are somewhere around here. I guess you could say he has chin nuts, you know what I'm saying? 
uh, it doesn't seem to be in a place where minds are located, you know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, if Tyson Fury goes to the body, I think he opens himself up for counters by Usyk, and I think Tyson Fury's punch resistance is gone. I think Wilder took a pound of flesh out of him, and this may be the optimal time for someone like Usyk to, to really you know, pick off Tyson Fury. But if he's going to do it, I, I think it's not going to. I don't think he gets in there and gets a win. I, I'm not saying I think that Turkey Alashik is corrupt. I'm telling you, I know there's corruption in boxing, but I think Alashik has some integrity. But I still think Tyson Fury is the favorite fighter. The, the Saudis love him. They talk about how they got love for the father, how they're in his heart, want Tyson Fury to fight 10 more years. You know, just hearing that shit tells me Tyson Fury is the goddamn favorite. So good luck to Yusik. Great fight. Um, but we just, we just got to see. If Tyson Fury gets in there and blasts him out, I'm telling y'all, y'all better start asking questions. How? You know what I'm saying? How? Now, Benavides and the Saudis. This is, what, this is the uniqueness of David Benavides and, and what David Benavides has going on, right? He wants to fight Canelo. Canelo doesn't want to fight him. Now, this is, this is what I think is, is crazy. The WBC is well connected to Saudi Arabia. The WBC obviously doesn't want David Benavides to fight uh, to fight Canelo, right? Like I'm not making that up. You can just look and see that they haven't forced Canelo to get in the ring with him. But the the bottom line is, you look at David Benavides, 28 wins, 24 KOs. Man has an 85% KO ratio, 6'2", almost a 75 inch reach. Canelo's 5'8", with like a 70 inch reach. That spells recipe for disaster. But it also, what it also spells is a good matchup for some of the bigger boys at 175 because it's not easy for David to make 168, but he can make it, especially working on the Heredia. That being said, I think... Now, this is, this is me being fair, not the conspiracy theorist that I can be. I just think David Benavidez going to fight some of the bigger guys at 175, I think is a good opportunity. If he wins, he uh, he beats Kavazic, he's probably a shoe in for, what's up, Chuko? I'm almost done. What, what you need, baby? You want, you want to sit down right there? Go ahead. I'm almost done. Turn that down, okay? Uh, that's my little man right there. But um, for David Benavidez, if he beats Kavazic, then Turkey Alashik already said, he wants him to fight the winner of Baval Berdabia. But they're not, they're not fighting until later this year, and there'll probably be a rematch. So David Benavides, after he fights Gavazdik, there's a good chance he could end up getting a fight against somebody next. But it sounds like Berlanga is going to fight Canelo. But I wouldn't be surprised if Turkey Alashik says, you know what, David's available. We don't want him to wait too long to get back in the mix at 175. Hey, we'll go ahead and make the fight. Against, uh, we'll offer Canelo the fight. This is what we'll pay him and try to make that fight uh, for Canelo's next fight and just bump Berlinga to the side. Now, another way we could look at this is they're trying to set up David Benavides to go up there and lose, and now he doesn't have to fight Canelo because Canelo's going to say, oh, look, he lost. I went to 175 and I, I won. And he, he comes up to 175 and he loses. Why would I fight him? So that, that's the conspiracy theory. Are the Saudis trying to set up Benavidez to take a loss for the WBC behind all the bullshit? That way they can protect the Golden Goose Canelo. But I don't know. Now, Javante Davis and rehydration clauses. Look, it's no secret that Javante Davis, under the tutelage and under the, uh, 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 the, the, the careful management of, with Leonard Ellaby, right, and the PBC, Javante knows he's the A side and he's going to make sure that. He gets um, A-side privileges. And one thing about Javante Davis that he's really big on is if he's going to fight somebody bigger than him, it needs to be a rehydration clause. We need to fight at a weight to where he's comfortable with. And, you know, at, at, to a certain extent, I don't – I, I, I kind of understand. But, man, if you want someone to really hold you in high regard like they did those guys from the past, you got to get in there and just scrap. This shit about rehydration clause and all that. That's crazy to me. If, if you if you if, if you a scrapper, if you a fighter, you fight. If it was a street fight, you wouldn't be thinking about it, about nobody's weight, right? In a street fight, it's nothing. Emotions flare up and boom, you let the bing bings go. 
But in the ring, now you're like, well, hold on. You need to, I, need to, I need to make sure. But when Davis said something, because he's talking about re, uh, rematching Ryan Garcia, he said he'd do it. But Ryan's got to make 140. You know, Ryan can't make that. But even if he made 140, Ryan Garcia to rehydrate, fully rehydrate, Tank's like, nah, he can only rehydrate to 150, maybe 152. And I was like, here we go with the rehydration clause talk. But he does make a good point where he says, look, man, I, I'm, I'm only 135 pounds. You know, to, to have me trying to fight these guys who can rehydrate to 170 pounds, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not really fair. So he makes a good point. I just think people are a little sensitive when it comes to him talking about rehydration clauses because they just want to see these guys get in there and fight to where there's no excuse when someone loses, like when Mayweather fought De La Hoya. Now, Crawford in the body shot. Let me tell you something. When it comes to Majumov, when it comes to Usyk, when it comes to a lot of these European fighters, it seems to be an issue with bodies. And some of you who, who want to sit here, man, and come with your quick retort, screw you, head champion, you just hate the Europeans. And you'll screw you, you bum. Take that shit all the way back to James Tony when he fought Vasily Giroff. Y'all remember that? Vasily Giroff was out here destroying people with them tiger trunks that he used to wear. Destroying people. Then he fought James Tony. The old, the old goddamn meatloaf James Tony. The old uh, Salisbury steak James Tony. James Tony came in that fight. Giraffe was having some success. James Tony started going to that man's body and stopped him. Body shots. So don't don't come out asking like, acting like I'm just making stuff up. The Europeans don't, the Eastern Europeans don't like body shots. I think for Crawford, going to Majumov's head, that ain't nothing but just motivate him. The more you hit him in the head, the more he starts growling. The more he turns into an animal. You know what I'm saying? But I think Crawford's going to have to go to his body. I think if Crawford goes to his body, he knocks him out. I think he knocks him out easy. Body shots. Don't go for his head. That ain't going to do nothing to him. You've got to catch that man to the body. But by doing so, you got to be smarter how, about how you engage him. You can't just, this, even though Crawford has a much longer reach, you can't just be reaching. Because if you misstep and you get the damn margin off being beans put on you, Crawford could be in a, sh a shitload of trouble. But I do, I do think Crawford in the body shot is going to be key. I really do. Just like we're talking about Fury and Usyk, the body shots. The ball, how he showed, and you hit Usyk to the body, he won't like it. I just think with Marjoram, it's going to be the same thing. I think Crawford... I think Crawford wins that fight. It's not easy, but I think it, he can get him out of it early if he catches him to the body. It can su sustain the attack. I think Majumov goes down, and then after that, he's going to be protecting his body, which opens up the head, and Crawford gets a knockout. Uh, he's a unified champion at 154 pounds, and his first fight at that weight. Okay, Fury in the body shot. Kind of like what I was saying with Terrence Crawford. You're going to have to go to the body. Everyone should know. You go to Usyk's body, you're going to have some success. But the problem is, you know, getting there and reaching and possibly being, you know, open for, for counters and getting bing bing. All right. So it sounds easy, but it's not easy. Um, for anyone who's ever, you know, been in the ring and sparred or anything, you try to go into somebody's body, especially the first three rounds where everybody's fresh and firing on all cylinders. That's, that's kind of hard to do, especially from the outside, unless you got super hand speed and super quick reflexes. Because if you got somebody who, who can time you and shit, boy, you can you can get hurt trying to go to somebody's body. It's best to work your way in and then you know have a plan of have a plan of attack. And once you get get within range, then let those shots go. But you don't want that's like throwing a lead uppercut. That's suicide, you know, unless you got the speed and reflexes. But if you don't, you don't want to do that. All right. So that being said, uh, don't take it to the stupid. We talked about the pound for pound rankings, Carrington. Look, look. Give that man, if you don't know who Bruce Carrington is, go and look at him. I think, I think that's the guy. He just has to keep winning uh, to get in there with anyway. They're both, they're both on top rank. If Bruce Carrington picks him from hardware at 126 and anyway decides to bubble up, I'm telling you, that's the fight That's the fight that they're going to make. Talked about Benavides and the Saudis. I think he needs to be careful, man. You know that they're going to sit there and try to set him up to lose. Uh, Gavazdik's not an easy fight. If he gets past him, he got to go to another tough fight. If it's Berta Biev and Baval, the winner of that, 
he already said he beat Bavala in, in sparring. Uh, every time he sparred, he beats the shit out of him. But the beer is a different animal. But um, it, it could be something what to lose. So that Canelo, the golden, uh, the, the the golden ticket, he don't have to worry about him no more. Uh, Javante Davis, it is what it is. I think Javante Davis beats just about everybody close to his weight. But the re, the rehydration clause, that, that's real, and that is a does make you say, Yo, my man, if you if you if you like that, then just go beat him. If you're knocking out cruiserweights and heavyweights and sparring then you should have no problem fighting somebody who comes to the ring at 165. Crawford in the body shot, those long arms, going into the phone booth, becoming a southpaw man. Crawford should have no problem getting the body shot off of Marjumov. And I think I think that's Marjumov's Achilles heel. And Fury, we already talked about that. I, I don't know how Fury's going to fight. But I think he would try to to, to get in, smother, uh, frustrate Usyk, be dirty, get physical. And, and I think you can see Usyk kind of like Lomachenko, not really know what to do because he's conflicted with do I fight back dirty, or do I continue being a clean fighter because I respect the sport of boxing? And that could cost him, cost him a loss, just like it cost Lomachenko against Salido. Y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans on seven continents. Yo, I'm in the breeze.